and protect life-saving trauma care. Save more lives. Save our trauma centers. Paid for by the 60 Plus Association. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, uh, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. You know, uh, we are no stranger, Robin, you and I, to um, political slanting of things, right? No. And and we have had our, our lessons learned over and over again that when we speak to people who are interested in running for office or interested in persuading us to go along with a, a proposal or an ordinance or bill... Um, that often they will pepper, I guess that's the word I want to use, they will pepper their dialogue with stuff that'll, that'll make it sound like, yes, that's the way to go. I, I, guess, I guess you call that propaganda. And, and um, sometimes when you hear about our healthcare system and, and you say, okay, am I hearing the truth or am I hearing something peppered? Am I, is this a political um slant here am i supposed to listen to this i want to know the real truth you know Mm -hmm. back in the old days remember when there was no politics associated with medicine yeah you went to a doctor the same way you go to a mechanic you know you found that you like this guy he seemed to be really good at what he did he took care of you and your family was really able to listen and pay attention and i don't know if we ever have those doctors anymore no, no, I take that back. I know we have those doctors still around. I just don't know that they are being allowed to practice the way they want to practice. Exactly. Uh, and that's probably a fact. John Horvat the second is on the phone. He has studied this way more than we will ever study it. And that's why we appreciate the fact that he's done this study. He's written a book. It's called Return to Order. Now, it's not just about the medical community and our medical issues or, or health issues that we're talking about but that's part of it uh john is a researcher a teacher an inspirational speaker he contributes to the biggies robin he's uh, a writer for the washington times he's been on abc news c-span quotes him fox news the wall street journal uh the christian post and he's written this book called return to order how a frenzied economy to an organic christian society uh where we've been how we got here and where we need to go good morning john horvath the second good morning john morning larry how are you doing good thank you for writing this and and uh, the research that you've done really and, and the fact that you've written it so that a lay person like myself can understand it is, is much appreciated <laughs> well I'm, I'm pretty much a lay person myself I, i'm really not super specialized in these fields but i did want to put them into into language which uh you know deals with our, our daily lives do we do we give our politicians benefit of the doubt or are they real do they really have ulterior motives when they decide they want us to live a certain way to have health care provided a certain way are they really looking out for our best interests or is there something hidden that we don't see well i mean there there are certainly a lot of factors that are in uh but um yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of connection between the lobbyists the the education establishment and the political establishment that uh, certainly uh, they they get they benefit from. So I, I think we we can't rule out a lot of uh, of interest involved in these things. One of the one of the predicted train wrecks of 2014, and I'm not trying to slant things as I just I, I'm not trying to be somebody doing what I just described in the intro. <laughs> But I heard this, and so therefore, I'll, if, if there is a slant, it comes from whatever source I heard it from. But there was a report. Oh, I know who I heard it from, too. It was from Bloomberg. Okay. No, no, I'm sorry. It was from Forbes. It was in Forbes magazine. In Forbes magazine, they were predicting that at the end of 2014, we would start to see um, insurance companies needing to be bailed out because of Obamacare. Uh, mm-hmm. w- which isn't good, obvi- obviously. I mean, ultimately, we are the ones who sacrifice. I'm guessing that doctors will have to um, change how they do things. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this, is a, this is not just a, uh, a modification or a little change here and there. This is a, a transformation, and uh, it's, it's going to change every, the, way, the way we see health care as, as it exists today. When did you start writing the book? Was it after you understood what Obamacare was about, or were you? It's, I mean, this is such a well-researched book. I'm guessing that you were doing this be, even before that 
uh, health care was enacted. Well, I mean, uh, this book it deals with a lot, a lot more than just Obamacare because it exists with it, it deals with economy as well, because uh, it is a very parallel. Uh, uh, it's a parallel situation, both economy and health care, and a lot of fa- a lot of way, a lot of things in society uh, depend upon uh, the basic human institutions of family, faith, and community to sustain themselves. And when you take those things out then you get government comes charging in and that's essentially what we've done and 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 so what really prompted this book was the 2008 subprime mortgage mortgage crisis which just threw everything into out of balance and uh, brought more big government into uh, economy and now more government into into health healthcare so, so with that said let me ask you about um uh, what let's see how do i ask this question are you familiar with the the way habitat for humanity works Sure. Yeah, I've I've heard about it. Uh, you know, just building houses for people, um, charitable. And okay, and they much, right? and they don't. Uh, they the, the uh, recipient of the house doesn't get it for free. Right. B- they get a loan, but they pay it back without interest. So if okay. if you were loaned fifty thousand dollars, you're going to pay back fifty thousand um, dollars. Is that biblical? Is is that a Christian principle or a biblical principle? Um, you mean as far as interest uh, payment, or just the way the way they uh, they, they set it up? Well, does the charitable thing. I guess I'm asking: Does the Bible speak? Uh, how do I say? It? Does it, I don't know if, it, if uh, do, what does the Bible have to say about charging interest? Does it does it come up at all? <laughs> it's a big uh, big point. In fact, I mentioned it in the book Return to Order. Uh, you know, because usury was we used to that's be, the used word to mean, usury. Yes. Yeah, usury used to mean charging any interest at all. And uh, it was largely as a result of just uh, the enormous charges that came upon uh, poor people who were in, in bad straits and uh, led them into uh, a lot of problems. The, the Bible does have teachings on that, and uh, it, it was forbidden in, in the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, th- there are, but there are circumstances where a person can uh, lend money at a certain low interest to cover costs to, as a gift. Uh, you know, all sor- there's all sorts of factors will allow a person to do that but uh, from a purely biblical point of view it's uh, the charging of interest uh, you know should be extremely moderate and only under certain certain conditions i uh, love how you compare the state of the, uh, the the state of the nation to a cruise ship on a never ending cruise and that's a quote <laughs> from your book and i have never heard it described that way but that is really accurate yeah, we're in a party situation, and nobody wants to say, well, look, there's a storm ahead. And uh, that's what I, uh, my return to order does, you know, says, well, uh, we can't keep on going like this. We're, we're, lo- we're, we're, you know, everything seems so happy. Everybody's, you know, the, 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 the party's going on, but uh, we, we have to wake up. <laughs> do, I, do I have to wait for the whole world to wake up, or can I wake up on my own? I might think a lot of people are waking up today, and uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'm waking up. A lot of other people are waking up. The more who wake up, the better, I think. Yeah, I think uh, you're right about that. We just need to, uh, uh, I think, as as things get worse, uh, people are mugged by reality and start to wake up. But things are getting worse. And, and and part of that waking up is that the American public themselves are becoming more vocal. They're just not saying, well, I've got this person that I elected in, into office. They can take care of it. They're actually being more vocal. They're getting on the Internet. They're making YouTube videos. They're actually expressing their own views and not hoping somebody else will do the same. Absolutely. No, it's, it's very true. We are a polarized nation. We are a nation that's divided. And uh, the book, Return to Order, divides them not necessarily in the traditional conservative, liberal type uh, classifications, but more along the lines of those who are um, uh, uh, into a culture of instant gratification to those who are concerned and see that, you know, there's more to life than just that. There is, there are, there is family, the community, faith that are, are very important and should figure in the solutions that we need. Do we have examples living among us right now? Or, and I'll, I'll a- ask directly if the uh, Amish may be one of those examples. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I'm not, I, I live here in Pennsylvania, right near Lancaster, which is uh, not quite, uh, which is right, which is their country. Um, I, I'm not that familiar with them. They, I mean, they definitely have those ties of faith, family, and community. In fact, I just sold a book to, <laughs> to an Amish fellow just to, 
who was his, who I was talking to, he was certainly liked the idea of organic Christian society, of, of a society, this, this close-knit society. So, uh, you know, they, this, these are very attractive ideas for them and, and for a lot of people. Does it also, would an organic Christian society also take into consideration how we handle our foreign affairs? Oh, of course, I think so. Yes, Absolutely. Because it is based upon the ideas of charity, of um, of justice, you know, these are principles that need to govern um, domestic and foreign policy. There, there's no doubt in my mind. So let's look at that for a second. When you say charity, uh, I've often listened to people who are uh, arguing or debating, and if they are classifying themselves as liberal, they will say what we should do is tax everybody and then redistribute the money we've collected so that the poor can have a little bit. Uh, those people who consider themselves conservatives say, no, what we should do is go to, don't, don't let the government take our money and redistribute it. Let's do it voluntarily through our churches and other civic groups that may have been set up like United Way or something like that. And, and instead of being forced, so either, either, both in both cases, arguments they are trying to express a way to be charitable um so which yeah, well, which one is which one fits the 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 mold better uh, from what you're trying to explain yeah the the obviously the the those it's charity has to be voluntary you can't force someone to love another it's something that is voluntary and uh when it when it kicks in it is is extremely powerful especially when it deals with family or your local community, or your parish, or even your nation, when you have a love for those things and you go beyond yourself, uh, that's it. It's definitely a, the the way to go because it's distributed faster, uh, more efficiently. Yeah. And also, one thing that's very interesting that when when somebody gives money to someone else personally, it establishes a bond between someone, the rich and the poor. It, it creates good good. Uh, uh, good relationships between them, a relationship of gratitude on one part and a relationship of, you know, of kindness and desire to, to help on the other. Right. Uh, when the government steps in, there's no relationship. It creates resentment, entitlement. Right. Oh, I, oh I yes. This. Yes. No, I'm with you. I agree with you. And the uh, self-sufficiency seems to uh, go down the tubes when the government steps in. I mean, you know, uh, we, we live right here in Florida where Cape Kennedy is uh, the whole national NASA section was, you know, the, the space program here was stopped. 12,000 people lost their jobs. And now, you know, and, and, and the uh, uh, U.S. government was saying, well, you know, that's good because now we don't have to put money into it. But now we're giving money to Russia for our American astronauts to go to Russia and go up to the space station on their aircraft. And it just seems to be a lateral move for whatever reason on the U.S. government's part. They took jobs away 12,000 jobs in our state from the American people, but they're giving it to the Russians overseas. No, no, it's just, it, is, it is a crazy situation. Uh, 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 a situation of self-sufficiency is, you know, it's, it's a very natural thing. Everybody wants to be self-sufficient. Everyone wants the security of, of being self-sufficient. And this mania of just, you know, outsourcing everything, sending everything overseas, uh, you know, it's just because of the, the money, the cost to shave off a couple pennies, I mean, it's really not worth it. What worth it? Uh, you, when you put the human factor back into economy, back into health care, back into society, then uh, life becomes much easier to live. It, it, when you take it out, it becomes a machine-like. It becomes, uh, you know, a big machine. And currency is an interesting thing because uh, there's a movement now, I'm sure you're aware of it, where some virtual money is actually being accepted. In fact, even before the whole computer thing started, we had a barter system here in Ocala called ITEX, and I'm not yeah. trying to give them a plug, but but you could literally, de uh, I guess, de determine what the value was of your own time mm -hmm. uh, and your own work and then translate it into a piece of paper called, a, a, I guess, a script. It was called script, yeah, right? Script. Yeah, script. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 no. yeah I've, I, There's a chapter in the book, Return to Order, or several actually about money because it is a... Uh, a thing that's very complex, uh, very simple that people have made complicated, but it is a uh, money is is there to serve people. It's not we're not there to serve money, and so often uh, our our monetary policies, you know, uh, don't really address the needs of a locality 
or they they don't have the they they force hardships upon people unnecessarily and uh, our present uh, you know fed system i think feeds uh, our culture of unrestraint and instant gratification by just uh, creating money out of nowhere yeah, destroying yeah. money out of nowhere yeah. it's just a it, it really feeds into the whole system. And uh, religion still has to play an important role because even though we're a multi-religious society, as we should be, there shouldn't just be one religion that fits all people, uh, it just seems that the strain of the economy, things like that, that really uh, uh, tries to uh, delve at the uprooting of everybody's religion because they're so strain to be so religiously correct these days that it feels like religion itself is starting to disappear oh yeah it's 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 very brutal i mean it it uh it is a type of um persecution because uh, you know the 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 obamacare thing for example is the uh, a mandate you know that's forcing people to go against their conscience Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, exactly. forcing the little sisters of the poor to uh, to for, to receive uh, contraceptive coverage. Right, I mean, right. these are kind of things that are just uh, yeah. unthinkable. You know, for 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 our times. Uh, let me just reintroduce our guest. John Horvat II is our guest. His book is called Return to Order, From a Frenzied Economy to an Organic Christian Society, Where We've Been, How We Got Here, and Where We Need to Go. And just a, a, just a side note before we go to the phones, John, and... Before I go to the phones, are you okay with taking phone calls from listeners? Yeah, no problem. Okay. No problem. Well, I just want to say something. <laughs> Almost every topic that we've ever debated on this show is covered in your book. So, I, I mean, it's amazing how many things you have in the book. And I apologize if it sounded like we were trying to focus on the Obamacare part of this. Um, but you really cover a lot of stuff in this book that we've we've talked about. And, and there's one here I'm looking at right now about honor that I'll get oh. to after the phone call. Uh, good morning. Thank you for waiting and being patient with us. You're on the air with John Horvath II. Uh, good morning, sir. And good morning. I hope you enjoy uh, what you're talking about, and it's uh, so very true as to what's happening. Uh, I, when you first came on, I thought it was more about our health care system, but that uh, you have a group in this country, and I don't see the federal government going after them, because isn't that more or less printing a uh, alternative currency? And I think there are some laws against that. Uh, was brought, these laws were brought about and during the formation of our country, whereas we were to have a uniform currency. And one of the big reasons the Fed was uh, instituted was to guarantee the stability of the currency and the fact that you could have, say, $100,000 of viable currency in New York and, and San Francisco would have $100 worth of viable currency. I mean, that's a very crude way of putting it, but that's basically why the Fed was uh, in, in store, uh, you know, constituted. Uh, right. San Francisco was booming in the 1800s to the point that there were more people than there were dollars around. And uh, right, yeah. No, you you was, need to have you need to have uh, in, uh, certain institutions to to really to give stability to money, but you don't need them actually making the monetary policy, and that's what's done been done today. You know they've become uh, they've taken the role where they were instituted to create money supply and avoid uh, runs on the bank to saying well we're the ones that are determining how inflation's going to be and unemployment's going to be and we uh, release the money or increase the money according to our whims and according to our outlook on economy that's that's not their job <laughs> i per- you know that's where i was coming to and i precisely i agree 100% with that right. Mm-hmm. It, it's an absolute crying shame that an entity of banks are actually running this country, and we have a federal government that is quite willing to go along with the ride as long as they keep their pockets full. That's the way yeah, it I, appears to me. And then, uh, yeah, and we're coming to our day of reckoning. That's the worst thing because you know we can't sustain this debt that we've 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 uh, we've we've brought up. Yeah, I think you're and right. And we have Bernanke and company in the Treasury just printing zeros. 
They're yeah, not making yeah. money. They're printing. They're not printing money. They're printing zeros behind this one pathetic one that's about to uh, go into deep space. And that's that a good way of putting it. Uh, yeah, very good way of putting it. Nothing but zeros. <laughs> yeah, and, really. And tell me, how many zeros is a loaf of bread going to cost you? Yeah, or right. is anybody going to accept a bucket of zeros for a loaf of bread? That's right. Yeah, we saw that in Germany in the twenties. Yeah, and eventually, if if, they, if you do have to have bread that you can't afford, somebody will come through, as whether it's illegal or not, and they'll have the the alternative uh, currency. They'll just okay. say, "Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll I'll sell you a loaf of bread if you'll uh, uh, cut my lawn or something like that." Yeah, you know, exactly. I don't, I don't know. Thank you, thank you for the call, Sonny. All right, let me let me talk about honor and moral restoration. That's part of what the book is about too. And, yes. and the way I'm going to approach it is this way. And everybody who's pop culture fans, I'm, I don't mean to pick on anybody in particular. But let's take Miley Cyrus swinging on a, on a wrecking ball, doing her song. And, I'm, and entertainment has a value. I'm not trying to say it doesn't. And I'm not saying people hold her up as, and, and glorify her. But you, you would see more about that than you would about the, uh, the, the soldier who saved a little boy from, from being shot at by, by the Taliban or something like that. You, would, yeah. you, you know what? We hold people up as if they're heroic. And, and we don't even recognize those who truly are heroes. It's just one of those observations I, mean, I wanted your feedback on. Yeah, That's a great and observation. So, uh, in, a, in a society that's that's based on money and based on self-interest and, and gratification, would, would take that first model. It says, well, she's making money. Uh, she's, uh, she's, she's filling a market, et cetera, and, and so it's good. It's, it's what we need to go for. It, it makes me feel good, or uh, I don't know how it could, but anyway, I guess some people feel good about that. But in a, in a society based on honor, uh, which is what I uh, talk about in Return to Order, uh, they would uh, definitely say the second one is is what really incites them to uh, inspires them. It 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 forces them to go beyond themselves. Let them think about you know the country, the society. You know it's not just me. And when you have an economy uh, based on that, it creates a very balanced economy, a economy that you know doesn't fluctuate, doesn't have this uh, all this mess that we have today. It's it's an entirely different way of looking at things. And Americans do respect that. I mean, we, do, we definitely have a, a respect for the military, and you can see it. But we, it, this is, what, this is the, the real foundation of any society or, or economy is that idea of honor. The challenge, and it's an impossible one to meet, is getting the immense amount of information in your book into a 25-minute interview on the radio. <laughs> um, That's great. So I, I want to make sure the listeners know how to get it. It's called Return to Order. Uh, John Horvat the second spells his last name H O R V A T. John Horvat the yes. second, and I have a copy. It's a hardcover book. I would like to give it away to the first person who asks for it. So call me if you want it. The number is six two two nine six two two. That's the W O C A Climate Control Source Hotline. And uh, John, tell us how we can get the book otherwise. And um, do you have a website we can go to? Yes, in fact, the website is is a very good place to get it. It's uh, uh, return to order dot org. Return to order dot org. Uh, there you can get the book. You can uh, read the uh, blog. Uh, there's a lot of resources there. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to our new or, or e newsletter. Uh, everything's there. That's the uh, the best place to get it. You know, and, j- and just as a side note, now my job is really to be silly. That's that's kind of my job. And and I had a silly observation one time that actually is almost in line with what you're saying. And and it's it's regarding the amber lights on the stoplights. If everybody was honest, nobody would need that amber light because that amber light is there to to so that you can't cheat. Because right. if, if it turns red, you stop. If it turns green, you go. <laughs> right? Right. 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 But the amber light gives police a chance to say, you know, you had time to stop, and an honest person would stop anyway. I, I don't know. Just I, it's, it's silly, and I probably don't make sense with it. But uh, no, no. In fact, I, I mean, I can sympathize very much with that because uh, you know, it's it's it it adds a human element into the into the whole thing because um, men are there are those little situations where you have to in between that a lot of the modern economy and modern government just is that black and white and just you know says you know one way or the other and makes it uh, very co- complicated the amber softens it a little adds a little balance i, I think so uh let and, me get this okay i'm sorry 
And the photographs and drawings you have in your book are outstanding. Yeah. yeah oh. oh, it's a well done book. Very, Very well done. Well done. Uh, that's why I wondered how long ago you've been working on it. And that's that. I'm glad we went that way because the the prep material seemed like it was going to be about Obamacare, which is part of it. It's just not all of it. Um, good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Sonny. Sonny. All right. Well, it'll be waiting for you here, Sonny. All right. Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Horvat. I really appreciate somebody out there trying to bring some reason back. Thank you. Great. No, thank you. There you go. Uh, yeah, John, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Great interview, and like I said, it's impossible to get your book into a 25-minute interview, so you'd have to <laughs> okay, have a... Okay, that was great talking to you, yeah. you have to have a few very, weeks. Very uh, we'll take a little break, and we will be right back. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Howdy, RL here to tell you about a great deal at Dairy Queen. For only $4.49, you can warm up to a hot, juicy combo of either a foot-long, quarter-pound all-beef chili dog or a tasty home-style cheeseburger. Smoking hot.